scripture lesson today is again from Matthew 5, verses 21 to 37. And this is a translation by Taylor Burton Edwards. He's on our General Board of Discipleship. And um, I'll ask if we can read it responsibly. Okay? So you have heard it, you have heard that it was said to those of old, do not commit murder. Whoever commits murder should be tried in a court of law. But I say to you, anyone who is grateful or curses toward a sister or brother should be tried in a court of law. And anyone who shows contempt to a sister or brother should be commended to hellfire. So if you are offering your gift at the altar, and right there you remember that your sister or brother has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar, and go first to be reconciled with your sister or brother. After that, come and offer your gift. Come to an agreement with your accusers quickly while you are walking with them down the road. Otherwise, your accusers may hand you over to the judge, and the judge to the attendant who will throw you in jail. Truly, I tell you, you shall not come out of there until you have paid the last penny. You have heard that it was said, do not commit adultery. But I say to you, whoever gazes at another spouse with desire has already committed adultery with that person <coughs> in your heart. So if your right eye makes you stumble, remove it and throw it away. It would be better for you to destroy one part of your body than to cast your whole body into hell. And if your right hand causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it away. It would be better for you to destroy one part of your body than for your whole body to go to hell. And it was said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you, everyone who divorces a spouse except for reason of sexual immorality by one or both of them, forces the other to commit adultery. And whoever marries the spouse so divorced commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it was said to those of old, do not swear falsely, but fulfill your vows to the Lord. But I say to you, do not swear at all, not by heaven, because it is God's throne, not by earth, for it is God's footstool, not by Jerusalem, because it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your own head, because you cannot make a single hair of it white or black. That your yes be yes, your no be no. Any more than this springs from evil. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious and merciful God, May the words of my lips and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Well, we learned last week that when we are disciples of Jesus Christ, we are light and salt to the world. Jesus says we are to bring the light of God's love to those around us. And we are salt so we can bring the flavor of God's grace to the world. But there's another quality of salt that Jesus seems to be talking about today. Cleansing and healing. If you've ever had a canker sore in your mouth, you know that they're very painful. And you probably also know that one of the things you can do to bring some relief is to gargle with salt water. Now the salt water really stings when it hits that open wound, 
but it also helps to clean the sore so it can begin to heal. Sometimes we need to be reminded that we are broken people. And sometimes our wounds need radical and deep healing that Jesus' teachings can provide. So in our scripture lesson today, Jesus is calling his disciples and us not just to understand the law differently, but to live differently because of this new understanding. <coughs> As we said last week, Jesus calls us not so much to do something as his followers, but to be something as his disciples. Be a different kind of person altogether because you follow not just the letter of the law, but because you live the spirit of the law. And then, of course, Jesus goes into great detail about what all of this means. And to be sure, the details are difficult. Jesus gets into not just the disciples' business, but ours as well. As some preachers like to say, he crosses over into meddling. The day Jesus takes on our anger, our relationships, and our way of not just telling lies, but accepting dishonesty. Everything from outright falsehoods to half-truths to what we have so casually called political spin. So let's talk about anger first. According to Jesus, it's anger that's underneath the commandment to not commit murder. Murder is the action, but anger is the underlying condition that disciples need to address. Anger left unchecked might not lead to murder, but it can still be incredibly destructive. Now I'm not telling you anything you don't already know when I say that this election process, the very, very long primary season, the presidential campaigns, and the election itself has produced the most anger I've witnessed in the United States for a long time. So according to an article written eight months ago, in July of 2016, the anger of American people was rooted in a dissatisfaction with the economy. The article says, do you wanna know why people are angry? Follow the money. Economic issues that fuel anger include high unemployment, pay inequality, stagnant incomes, and massive debt. Many hardworking people have not had a raise in five or more years, and the median household income is stuck at the level set in 1995. While in past decades Americans believed that hard work would eventually pay off with higher wages and upward mobility. As we approach 2017, faith in the American dream has declined. People no longer think the future is secure. Middle-aged workers worry they won't have enough money for retirement. Many do not believe their children will be able to enjoy the same or better economic status than they have achieved. Anger has led to playing the blame game on a whole new level. As immigrants and women have entered the workforce in large numbers, at the same time many companies have closed down or moved operations overseas. As a result, those who believed that a middle class lifestyle was in reach have become bitter, enraged, and even violent. So it's this anger, and not murder, that's the real concern, not only for people today, but for the people to whom Jesus was speaking. This anger is what fills us up and threatens to boil over. And it's 
this, Jesus says, that his disciples need to address first. As it turns out, this is something the church has a lot of answers for. Jesus tells us straight out that we must be reconciled with our brothers and sisters. He says we need to have dealt with our anger and have tried to make a way to to, to find a way to make peace before we can come to the table of the Lord to share in the bread and the cup. Remember that our liturgy for the great thanksgiving begins with these words. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and seek to live in peace with one another. This means that those who are holding on to anger, resentment, and ill will towards others are not prepared to join Christ and their brothers and sisters around the table. Now I know that for me, I wonder how seriously I work on the anger and the grudges that I hold when I come to the table. Jesus says, you've heard it said, you shall not murder. But I say to you, work on your anger and find a way to make peace even with your worst enemy. This is what transforms the world. Now the next thing Jesus asks us to look at is the nature of our relationships. And this time we have two issues, adultery and divorce. And again, Jesus isn't just talking about the actions of adultery and divorce themselves, but rather to our motivations, our heart, and our thoughts. Although Jesus is talking about the marriage relationship, he wants us to consider not just how we act toward other people, but what's inside of us in terms of how we think about other people. He's asking us to consider how we have failed to care for those sacred, sacred relationships with friends or family members by holding on to our grudges and resentments and refusing to find a path to reconciliation and peace. And the final category